welcome you, our audience today, and hello to my panel members. I'm Linda Baker, and with me here today is Reverend Linda Burdett and Kathy Richmond. Before we start our conversation together, will you please share in a centering prayer with me? Let's start from that place within ourselves where we connect with the good in each other and look toward God with our offer to help do his good through his will. Holy One, thank you for all the blessings here before us. And thank you, too, for giving us the ability to increase our knowledge by seeing even more blessings today than we did yesterday. Thank you for helping us find and learn the mysteries of life on earth through so many plentiful resources. We ask you strengthen our good intentions with a divine sense and allow us to recognize our own good with every breath you give to us. In Christ Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. Emma Curtis Hopkins, the teacher of teachers. Her students, that they could cure illnesses within themselves and others. Those that entered into her classroom as invalids left cured. That's what the Fillmore said about her. Now, if you think this sounds vaguely familiar and you have heard of or read about Mary Baker Eddy, you're right. They were both in and associated with Christian science for a long time together. I've always been fascinated by healers of all kinds and ways of life. And this one too has been a delight, but a struggle to understand. Emma's train of thought and teachings had an interesting concept to me. She emphasized good as the true definition and experience of God, stating it's not his name though. It's the word that gives you a quick and direct path to where you speak truth to God and Christ Jesus face to face and heart to heart. Like when you're praying for, for a life to be saved and you're so down on your knees every way possible, she says, speak unto him face to face speak unto him over and over. Her teachings explain, <clears throat> excuse me, we tend to believe we don't have the good that we deserve or that belongs to us and we say so. So seek your good and you seek God. Acknowledge to God that good is for you. You want to exist as good and you want to receive good. The chief aim of her writings is to awaken the divine sense in her readers. Recognizing and using your good is possible once you recognize and use your inward eye, as she deeply delves into in her book, High Mysticism. She teaches to keep your eye on the eternal and your intelligence will grow. If you focus on your personal emotions and affairs, you hold back the beauty of the miraculous action. So first acknowledge you have good for you. Chapter one, the focus of this taping is about repentance. And what that means simply is what you see, you be. Look unto me and be ye saved. In heaven there is laid up a pattern which he who chooses may behold and beholding set up his own house in order. Lifting up the inner eye to him who is above reason lights the two outer eyes to see the world in a new aspect, gives the tongue new descriptions of the world and tips the pen with fadeless phrases. In the Opanishads, which is the sacred Hindu writings, it says, thou, thou cannot behold me with thy two outer eyes. I have given thee an eye divine. The direction of your inward eye is described like this. Directing it toward human faces causes us to collect sadness and depression. Directing it away from objects that gratify the five outer senses allows for sanity and soundness. 
directing it toward the heights protects moral principles, sincerity, and courage. Directing it downwards toward dust and you will see dust. All of the forces of the universe cooperate with vision toward holy bliss ideals. The ability to use your inward eye can be done by knowingly practicing it or unintentionally and spontaneously opening to inspiration. <clears throat> Excuse me. She provides pages of quotes about looking up and lifting up and professes honor and fortune exists for those who remember they're in the presence of the high cause. The cause of being, not being itself, the cause of truth, not truth itself, and the cause of spirit, not spirit itself, is the I am that I am that awakens the authority, majesty, and undefeatable courage in the heart of even the meekest and the weakest. Vision often God will renew. So shall the body be like a tree planted by rivers of water whose leaf doesn't fade. Vision often Godward so that affairs may go well. Gaze often toward our father and all thoughts shall be like morning music. Those that don't look upward are existing in sin, disorder, and death. For them are offered two songs and two names. The first is the song of Moses, the I am that I am, which lifts you up from the depth of the wells of hidden strength with the sincerity, boldness, and intelligence of leadership. The other is the song of the lamb, and the name is Jesus Christ. It isn't as immaculate as the I am that I am, and it means God with us. It's the name of newness, healing, comforting tenderness. Look under me, remove the sense of limitation and danger. So <clears throat> in summary, uh, believe you are worthy of having good in your life. Focus more often from your third eye and use it to find God in your situation. Don't drown in everybody else's drama or in your own selfish pleasures or on death or the dead. If you are so caught up in everyday living and forget about your eternal resource, either look to good in all things or rely on Christ to help you find your way. Keep trying to look into a heavenly direction. Understand this link to miracles is your source for inspiration and creativity. <clears throat> After I got through reading all of this, I pulled out uh, the computer and looked in on the internet because I wanted to know, why do we bow our heads when we pray? If we're, if she's telling us always look up and uh, uh, what they said, uh, on the internet was that it's a, a sign of humility, a tradition, uh, that that's, that's uh, how you're supposed to uh, uh, talk to God with your head bowed. But it also said that uh, Jesus in the Bible, he never bowed his head. When he prayed, he always lifted his head and looked upward. And he had his eyes open. I thought that was interesting. So I'll pass it over to the panel and uh, just ask you, uh, uh, do you think, uh, I know that she hasn't taught us how to heal each other in chapter one, but does it seem to you to be a stepping stone in the right direction? Yeah, I... Uh... I took some notes. There's a lot of stuff packed in there. So I'd like to just be able to sit and read it. But I, I like it says, what you see, you be. And I thought, wow, 
you know, you could just use the letter C and B and remind yourself. And then you talk about the inner eye. And when you look down, you see dust. When you look at heights, you see sincerity. So it's interesting that you brought up how we look down when we pray, uh, because it is that is in conflict with what she's saying, because we look down, we're not seeing dust, we're praying. And then gaze towards the Father is like morning music. Ah, that I, I loved the just the, the visual of that. And a song of lamb is like God with us. Focus from your third eye. Don't look drown yourself in others' drama and in death and look in a heavenly direction. Those are the things that spoke to me and there's so much more, but that's that's what spoke to me. And I, um, I really think about. So thank you for, for finding this and for sharing it uh, with us, Linda. Okay, um, the, thank you both. There really, really is a lot um in this and on this that are worthy of talking about and thinking about um it's interesting to me that this chapter is um uh, on repentance when the the lesson or the part of it that you shared on with us is more on uh creating our own higher self and opening that connection with with the divine with god with our father i find that when i pray i often start like this but i usually end like this and it was funny that that you brought that up i hadn't really thought of it until you until you said that um we know that metaphysically repentance means to change and and we go to the the saying that when you know better, you do better. And and that, of course, sin is an error in thinking. We're, we're thinking wrong and we're acting from that wrong thinking. So as you're reading and I'm thinking, where's repentance in there? I realize metaphysically that it's all about that. Learning to look beyond the 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 little things in the world and I was thinking about trees. It's springtime here and all the trees are coming back to life and putting their clothes back on. And uh, it just makes everything look so, so beautiful. And they don't care who's president or if there's a war or who married who or who's king or queen. None of that impacts the trees in any way, shape or form. They are grounded in the soil and and growing in God, in their godness. And as you were reading, I was thinking how incredibly beautiful that is. I personally really like third eye meditations, but I don't see myself looking inside. For me, I visualize more sinking inside, you know, just just kind of bringing and folding all that I am into the allness of all that is. So I don't see, I kind of think into it. It's really hard to put this stuff into words. Wonderful reading, wonderful sharing. Thank you for the lesson, Linda. I got a lot out of it. Well, I'm glad you liked it. That that change to me, that repentance, means to change the direction of the way you're looking at things you know uh, don't 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 look directly at the face of people face to face and people just change and look up i thought it was an interesting concept i'm glad you enjoyed it both of you i appreciate your comments too so um <clears throat> thanks today to you and our panel members Everybody out there in YouTube land, thank you for inviting us into your home and your living room, probably, where we all just shared in a conversation meant to offer some resources to further your insight, add faith into your life, and 
give you a new outlook on a challenging situation, maybe. If we helped or you simply enjoyed our time here, please let us know with a comment or a phone call. We would like to hear your opinions or suggestions for future topics, and we'd like to meet you. Join our panel as a guest or a member. The phone number is identified here, so look for it and call us, especially if you'd like to pursue High Mysticism Chapter 2. So until we meet again, know we wish you good health and a happy life. And bye for now. Bye-bye. Thank you for joining us and let's stay connected and grow in spirit. We are on Facebook, search for Unity Church of El Cajon and follow us and like our posts. You can reach us on YouTube at Unity Church of El Cajon. Please subscribe to our channel, watch our videos and leave comments which can help us improve. We are on the web at unityofelcajon.org. Email or call our church office to receive our weekly newsletters, which lists all of our activities and opportunities to learn and grow together.